Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome to my shop. Today I'm going to continue with the sliding table saw purchase considerations. I'm going to cover accessories and by accessories these are items that you can purchase after you've purchased your table saw. Um, they can either be from the manufacturer, they can be from a third party manufacturer, or they can be shop made. And a lot of this really depends upon how you use your saw and what you want to do with it. So a lot of that's going to be opinion based and, and please take that into account because what I don't find useful on my saw you may find uh, just a tremendous use for. So, so just be aware of that uh, there's just such a variety of ways to, to use sliding table saws and that can vary from user to user. So I'm going to share with you some of my best choices and some of my worst choices. And uh, let's get to it. Here the first uh, topic I'd like to talk about in accessories is clamping stuff to the sliding table. And I've used a variety of, of uh, clamp devices over the years. Everything from a Baltic birch uh, insert into the T-slot with a with a thread and, and just a knob that clamp things down. I don't, got away from that. That's <clears throat> it works well. It's just a bit cumbersome to set up. Subsequent to that, I used a, uh, a system that was designed by my uh, late friend. Uh, he passed away a number of years ago. And that's a modified Craig hold down clamp. And the new ones are auto adjust. They're much easier to, to work. but. Uh, this fits into a, to a, an aluminum slot. This is his design. He milled it. It's got a countersink here, countersink there. And you put this in the T-slot. You slide that and then adjust the clamp. So it's, I still keep those in the table. I don't use those a whole lot anymore, but, but they're available if I need them. A very, very cost-effective way to do it, particularly if you've got the ability or a friend that can mill those uh, aluminum blocks up for you. The other, the other option <coughs> is a manufacturer provided option. This is a uh, eccentric cold down clamp. I purchased this with my, with my shaper. So this, since this is a, a Felder design, it does not fit the Martin slot. Honestly, these are, these, I mean, these are very beefy, uh, but I don't find this as useful because this, it, the, when you clamp this thing down with the eccentric clamp, it, it tends to want to move your workpiece along the fence, and I don't particularly care for that. It's, I think this, by the time you get this thing set up with the, with the nut and the, and the um, attachment, this this is probably just shy of three hundred dollars, so just be aware of that. That's I think you're, you for me my money's better spent elsewhere. I prefer the um, modified Craig clamp over that uh, manufacturer installed eccentric clamp, and it's much much more cost effective. Okay, the next option is a. Um, an air clamp type assembly. Uh, this is a third party supplier. This was uh, um, built by Matt Campshire at Airtight uh, uh, Clamps. Uh, manufacturers also have these. I, I like this system. Uh, it's, it is a bit on the pricey side, but hey, it's, uh, uh, it works so well. I, you know, it, once I pay for an item, I tend, if it's very useful to me, I forget about the cost. If I paid a lot for an item and I don't find it very useful, those are the purchases I tend to regret. Okay, the other uh, next, next topic deals with the ability to cross cut small pieces. Uh, this is a uh, Eigner, I'm not sure what, it's an Eigner product. I, this came with a saw when I purchased it used. I used it for a while. I, f I find this, it works, uh, but it's not optimal. It does have some 
pointy things here. You can use this and, and clamp pieces up to your, your workpiece. You can use it as just a small cross-cut fence. Um, I, don't, I don't use that anymore. The reason I don't use that is because I went with the Fritz and Franz jig. Uh, this can be built very inexpensively. You know, you can even build it for less money than I did by not, not putting in T-tracks, but I do like the stop blocks and the T-tracks on this. Uh, this you could just build from shop scrap if you wanted to. Uh, very inexpensively. I think I probably have less than $30 in that. Handles, knobs, T-tracks and all. Uh, but since I built the Fritz and Franz jig, I don't use this uh, Eigner. I think this is called a X-Boy or Crosscut Guide, X-Guide or something like that. I'm not sure what it is. Um, <clears throat> this is built for a lot less money than this cost. I, I have uh, the personal belief that the first thing any new slider, sliding table saw owner should do is build your own Fritz and Franz jig. That's the best and most used jig I've, I've got on my slider. Okay, the next accessory, and, and primarily this is probably going to be a, a manufacturer, original manufacturer uh, item for most, most circumstances, uh, that is the accessory support table. And this, very, this is going to be specific to whatever the profile is on your sliding table. Uh, sometimes they're aluminum. This is steel, uh, but it, if you process sheet goods in any way, shape, or form, uh, particularly large items, this is going to be uh, a useful accessory to you. So it might be wise to purchase this, go ahead and purchase one of these with, with your sliding table saw if you intend on using sheet goods. The other option that works in conjunction with this and other, other makes are the parallel rip fence uh, assembly. And you saw this on, on the uh, getting the most from your sliding table saw series. Uh, this is used in conjunction with the stop on your crosscut fence. I, most of the work I do is with hardwoods. I don't find this accessory as useful as I do the Fritz and Franz jig. So the Fritz and Franz jig I, if you've watched any of my videos, I, I know you've seen this one. I've got mine set up with some T-tracks, a scale, and a couple of adjustable stop blocks. And since I mostly deal with solid woods, I'm always using this for um, as a parallel rip fence. Uh, it actually, I prefer that over the standard rip fence. So as far as a standpoint of of shop accessories, make your own. There are, there are some commercially available models. I've not seen any with the T-Tracks, and this can be made very inexpensively. Uh, so I, that's, you know, when people question me about, hey, what, what do I need for my slider? The, the Fritz and Franz jig is item numero uno uh, for what I recommend, and I recommend making your own. This is an Eigner vectoral fence I've put on the machine. Uh, it's, um, it's a high quality fence. It has some unique features to it. One of the things you'll notice here is this handle. And this handle operates a little tab that pulls out here. Let me zoom in on that. Okay, this handle operates this little tab which, which actually folds back into the, into the fence. So if you've got uh, a rip operation here, it enables you to push the workpiece through, uh, through the blade. Now if you've got a saw that, that where you want to use the, 
the rip fence is a standard item. This, this might be a useful accessory to you. It's, it's a very expensive fence. And in retrospect, I think I probably should have applied my funds elsewhere because I don't even keep this on the saw anymore. Uh, it does have a, a low position as well. which provides another option for you. Let me zoom back out here. The handle can reposition up to a position which, which is comfortable. And you can operate this from the, from the operator side of the saw. But what it has is a hold down for various thickness of stock and basically you just put that down and it, it holds the workpiece down in the vicinity of the blade. The, um, the tab here also works on this side. So that's the Eigner vectoral fence. Uh, again, it's a it's a high quality fence. I just I don't don't really use it. Um, generally, I just keep the standard factory fence on the saw. If you're insistent upon using your your sliding table saw like you would a, con a standard cabinet saw, that would be a useful accessory. I purchased that vectoral fence before I really figured out how to how to to effectively use the uh, the sliding table saw for ripping operation. Now I use different techniques. Techniques. Okay, I've put the standard fence back on the uh, machine, and uh, you'll notice there's several holes drilled here, and that was put in by the previous owner of this machine, and and this. This accessory I got with the, uh, uh, I purchased it when I, when I got this machine. Uh, it's called, it's an Eigner product, it's called this uh, Sawboy. And this threads into these holes, these tapped into the fence. And what this is intended to do is provide the ability where you can attach a pattern to to your workpiece and I'm gonna have to I don't know whether I can adjust this high enough let me see for where my blade is and what you end up doing is positioning this edge of this to the outside edge of the blade and you use this for pattern cutting. I've used this but I've not really used it for pattern cutting. I've used this as a fence, elevated fence, for when you've got uh, like plastic laminate or veneers hanging over the top and bottom edge of a piece of sheet goods and you want to trim it flush. I've used this fence for that. Um, it's not something that I think I would go out of my way to purchase uh, individually unless you just had a specific need for using your table saw for pattern cutting or for uh, uh, trimming, trimming excess materials. There's probably less expensive ways to, to handle that. So, I mean, it's again, like all Ogner products, they're, 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 they're high quality, but they're also very expensive. And you'll either have a use for them or you don't. So that's the Eigner saw boy. Okay, I've got the chip flap open, and uh, the next thing I want to talk about is a zero clearance insert. And the easiest way to do that is take out your standard insert, use it as a pattern, and then, at least for your holes, and this is a zero clearance insert I did. And one of the things I figured out when I did this that it just you you. You can't have this extending out too far to the left-hand side of the blade or outboard side of the blade because the, the, it interferes with the sliding table. 
So that really leaves a very thin sliver that has a tendency to vibrate. And uh, I've um, I pretty much, while I've got these, and I've also got a blank that I've milled out, uh, I don't really use zero clearance inserts very much at all. I can't really imagine other than to keep small slivers from falling down to the chip flap uh, why that's pretty much all I use there. So anyway, that's a shop-made accessory, and that's going to be specific to whatever saw you have. Okay, the next accessory I'd like to talk about is uh, what's called a deflector. And you can, you can either make your own or uh, buy a, a commercial version. I've got examples of each. This is my shop-made version. I just put a handle and a couple of rare earth magnets here. And it's got a very steep angle on it. And what its intended function is, is to put up against the outfeed side of the blade and attach to your, your cast iron table. And it's important to position this thing. What's it, what it's intended to do is it takes, as you cut, move your workpiece through the blade, the off cut, you know, particularly if it's real short, has a tendency to want to, you know, bounce around due to windage or vibration or whatever, and it'll contact one of these teeth and kick back. Uh, if you position this thing correctly, it will it will deflect those offcut pieces away from the blade. So for repetitive cuts, you don't have them all bunching up at the trailing edge of the blade and swinging around. So it's it's effective from that standpoint. <coughs> I don't always use it. I usually forget I have them. Uh, this is a, a modified commercial uh, version. Again, an Eigner product. This was uh, uh, by the, pre the previous owner. I got to pick this up with the machine with the previous owner. But his modifications were he put, he took out the standard rare earth magnets and put mag switches in them, which is, it's nice. It's a lot easier to get in on and off the saw, but uh, again, position this thing, and um, it deflects the uh, offcuts. Is it necessary? Yeah, I usually don't use them, but sometimes I have small pieces kicking back. If I had, if I had a bunch of work where I had a bunch of small pieces, I'd probably set this thing up. Hey, the the last accessory I want to talk about is. If, you've, if you're upgrading to a slider from a cabinet saw, you may have one of these. This is a tenoning jig. Uh, this was modified by the previous owner. I'm sure he took the miter bar off the bottom of this thing and attached an aluminum plate with a, something to clamp it in the T-slot. In the I, I have not used this. As a matter of fact, this is the first time I've had it on this slider uh, since I purchased it. Uh, it's been seven years or so ago. I don't use this because I have no need for, for doing tenons on a table saw. I, if I need to do an integral tenon, I'll do it on the shaper. It uh, just uh, gives a much cleaner cut. So if you don't have a shaper, this may be useful to you. But you can, you, you can modify these to, uh, to mount it to the sliding table as, as probably almost any other accessory that will fit in a T-slot or a miter slot. It just depends on what your, uh, what your needs are. So I want to leave you with one last accessory. For some reason, sliding table saws have the dust collection ports in, located in the most inconvenient spot on the saw from an operator perspective. It's generally on the far right hand side and all the way to the rear. I always found myself walking around, opening the blast gate, starting the saw, and then going through the operation. I got around that. I have my uh, dust collection piping in the back, a blast gate's there, right between the garage door rails. I mounted a half inch piece of Baltic birch ply and drilled a hole in it. Took some three quarter inch EMT tubing and a tubing bender. 
and made me an operator so I can, op I can operate my blast gate from the operator side of the machine. It also gives me a good place to hang my hearing protection. Important, more importantly, it clears my head. Um, <clears throat> the uh, wrapping on the handle, you could, you could use a, a bicycle tape, uh, bicycle handle tape. This product here is, is 3M Vet Wrap. It's been up there for I don't know how many years, but it's held up very nicely. It's just more comfortable to operate uh, by having a, a grip there. Another alternative might be some heat shrink tubing. So anyway, with that last tip, I thank you for watching and have a great day.